It's a privilege again to be in the presence of God. This is the dwelling place of God. This is the house of God. Where his uh, glory, his beauty is in our midst. We thank God for his protection. He has protected us the whole week. Now we come to an end of this week. Healthy, protected, loved, cared for. We thank God for all the benefits we got from him. May the Lord continue to bless you as you continue to celebrate him, to fellowship with him, to be with him. We thank you for allowing your children to minister to God, to be part of this move, the move of the Holy Spirit. You know the Holy Spirit is working in these days as we are getting closer to the end of the this time at the end of the times we see the Holy Spirit moving in a tremendous way so God is using small people small children young people to bring the revival the end revival we are approaching the end of the age so God is using a generation that are young to bring his glory before Jesus comes back. So we thank the parents who allow their children to minister to God and to be channels which God are using to bring his glory. Before the coming of the Lord, the Bible says that he will unite the spirit of the sons and daughters with their fathers, their mothers. He will bring this reconciliation, love, reconciliation between father and children, mother and children. And the spirit of Elijah, Elijah, big prophet, will come upon many young people to bring again the revival. Remember that Elijah, in his time, he brought revival in Israel where people have abandoned their faith. They followed other gods like Baal, other foreign gods. Israel, the nation that were committed to serve God wholeheartedly, they abandoned their God and followed the pagans or the Gentiles, idols. So at that time, they were astray from the way of the Lord. Then Elijah stood up with anointing. He, he preached. He preached with the miracles and wonders. And many people returned to the Lord. The hearts of the sons were united with the hearts of their father God. So the, the Bible said that at the end of the age, on the end of time, the same spirit will come back to bring together the spirit of children to unite them with the spirit of their parents and that this will become a beginning of a great move of revival so allow pray for your children to come to serve the Lord Amen so we thank God for uh, Junior Ezaf God bless you so much. But you need to, to make more practice to pray and to arrange your voice. Try to, to be bold. Arrange your voice. Uh, tune your voice. Listen to the YouTube how other people uh, sang and imitate their voice. By practicing, by doing that, you will become a good singer, a good worshiper. So don't just follow the music but <clears throat> try to, to, to listen the voice and try to imitate. When you do that you will become more familiar with the notes of music uh, when they play any song you will be able to adapt yourself because you, are, you have already 
tuned your ears to listen <coughs> to the music. So, so I encourage you every time, every like twice or three a week, just try to, to listen to music and imitate them. Don't just sing whatever you, but try to, to see the change in the melody, uh, imitate those voices. Do you understand as half junior? But you are doing great things, but we, we want you to, to do more, to do more, to do more. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Let us read in Revelation 5, 9 to 10. Our topic is mad kings and the priests. We were mad. Priests and the kings. As you see, that Jesus had made us to become kings and priests in his kingdom. Revelation 5, 10. But allow me to read the 9 and then 10. They sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. Verse 10. And have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign where? On the earth. Our dominion will be on the earth. The, this verse is an, an important verse in the Bible because it shows our position our position in the Lord it's not just a title because you can be removed to that title you can have a title today maybe you are president tomorrow you can step out you can have a title to become a CEO they change that and they become another person but the this to become priest and and the kings are not a simple title, titles their position and that position is the highest position in the kingdom of god the work of jesus on the cross was a very significant because of his power to change our status to change our lifestyle to change our position from the low level position to the highest position this was made by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Sometimes we don't understand the importance of Jesus being on the cross. Remember, Jesus was God. He was a king. He was everything. Everything was created through and by him. The same Jesus came to live with people with low, low, low profile. People who were sold into Satan's hand. Humanity, the whole world, were in captive of Satan. They were under oppression, under torture, under dominion of Satan. Then Jesus thought the way to redeem us, to rescue us from the hand of Satan. Remember when Moses went to Egypt, the son of Israel, 
they were under dominion of Pharaoh. They were slave of Pharaoh. So God sent Moses to snatch them out of the hand of Pharaoh. It was a miracle for them because they were powerless. They were not able to come out of the hands of Pharaoh. They were just used by Pharaoh. Manipulated by Pharaoh. They were under like under punishment of God because they were just by themselves without any hope without anyone to help them they thought that God has forgiven has for, for, forbidden them and forget them they lived without hope they couldn't dream and have a vision for tomorrow their life was just the present day how to live they knew every time that they were going to die because of oppression the burden upon them they suffered so much under the oppression of pharaoh by the grace of god he sent moses who the man who had the power of God within him the power of liberation the power of redemption the power of deliverance it was not easy to come and liberate the son of Israel without negotiating with Pharaoh when Moses negotiated with Pharaoh to deliver the son of Israel out of his hand, Pharaoh refused. So when Pharaoh refused, he, wants to use, he wanted to use his power to intimidate Moses. But because Moses had the power of God within him, he started to fight with Pharaoh. At last, Moses was able to bring out the son of Israel under his hands, under, under the bondage of Egyptian people. It was not easy. This required supernatural power, anointing from above, to bring the son of Israel from one kingdom, Egypt, to another kingdom, Canaan. Pharaoh did not comply with Moses, but because of punishment from God upon him, because of the pressure from heaven upon him, he told to Moses, go with your people. Not because he want them to go, but because of the pressure and the power of God upon them. So this story of Moses to deliver, to rescue the son of Israel from the kingdom of Egypt to the kingdom of Canaan, the promised land, it was like a symbol, a lesson for us today to understand how Jesus rescued us, delivered us from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. The humanity, the whole world were under Satan. Likewise, the son of Israel were under Pharaoh. So Jesus came from heaven with another authority. In him, upon him, with the power of God. He lived with us like Moses lived with the son of Israel. Then Jesus started to bring healing among people. He prayed for the sick people. 
He delivered people from the people who were de- demon possessed. People who, who were under oppression. Jesus brought life. Jesus brought hope. Jesus brought deliverance upon them. That way, he was telling to devil, I have power. You devil, please leave. Let these people go. Give freedom to these people go. But Satan refused. Satan said, okay, let me kill Jesus. This one who is coming to negotiate on their behalf. Let me kill him. By killing him, I will continue to oppress these people. But Satan is a foolish. He didn't know that. The way of Jesus to die was the way to bring out from the death those people who were captive under his hand to the kingdom of God. So the death of Jesus was just the way Deliver everyone to, to bring everyone out of darkness, out of his kingdom, Satan kingdom, to the kingdom of God. Satan didn't realize about that killing Jesus was to give life to his people. Satan didn't know that. This the greatest mistake today. Satan is regretting why he killed Jesus. Because by killing Jesus, innocent guy, innocent people, innocent man, Satan lost, lost everything he has. Because by killing the innocent, it meant that you are giving liberty to all people who were not innocent. Because he killed a just man. A righteous man. So those who were not righteous. Those who were not just. Those who were not holy. Became holy because of one person. Amen. So Jesus. When he rescued us from the kingdom of Satan. He knew that we were slaves. He knew that in Satan's hand, these people were his slave, like the son of Israel were slave. The day of the Israelites comes from came from Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea, then they went to desert wilderness. After three months, God made this statement. He called Moses. He said, Moses, now these people. They are no longer slave, but they are a royal nation, a priesthood, a royal priesthood. The first word that Jesus, the Moses, uh, God told Moses was to tell the true identity of the son of Israel after their coming out of Egypt. God told him that they are no longer slaves. But they are kings and the priest. Oh, Israel didn't realize that. They thought that this was just a merely words, just words to play to please people. But their identity, their position, have changed from slave to kingship. But the son of Israel did not pay attention to that position. They continued to sin. They continued to to, to worship idols until God chased them and brought them into another country where they were slaves again. But this was not God's intention. It because they preferred to become just slave. Sometimes you have this privilege you have this position but you don't know who you are just you play like a small kid because you don't realize how much you don't realize 
you are positioned. I, I, I know many people, they lost their opportunity because they didn't know the position where they were put in. God wants you to understand, to realize that you are not just a simple person, but God has made you king and priest. So the same way Moses, God told to Moses that Israel is the holy nation, a royal nation, a royal priesthood. She was just the, the type or the antitype or the symbol, metaphor of, of, of what Jesus we, we do for us in the future. The, the, the verse we read in Revelation chapter 5, 9 to 10, it says that Jesus, he has made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. This is a great, great position in the kingdom of God. To become a king. To become a priest. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible say. See how Jesus did. For us to become a king and a priest. The Bible say. He has rescued us. From. The dominion. Of. Darkness. Let me make a small paraphrase uh, alluding to, to make a, a allusion to, 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 to Moses and the son of Israel. I, I can read that. For Moses has rescued them from the dominion of Pharaoh. You understand? Of a Pharaoh. But today, Jesus, our Moses, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and he brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. The, this word he brought us it means to bring something. In uh, New King James Version they say he conveyed us to convey you, 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 you. there is a word a convoy here but in Greek word this word is very significant it called metistemi metistemi in Greek this means transfer he made a transfer Jesus transferred us from one dominion to another dominion to another kingdom we have been transferred you see when you want to change your your location you transfer everything you send everything from one city to another city this word to bring us into his kingdom to convey us into his kingdom means to try to make a transfer from one dominion to another dominion from the lowest level to the highest level in the kingdom of God when you receive Jesus as your king you receive Jesus as your savior there is a transfer that is made that transfer is to bring you out from the slavery status to the kingship status. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 the Bible says he raised us up together we and Jesus and he made us sit together 
Where? In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Though people see us walking, being with them, sitting with them, eating with them, sleeping with them, doing everything with them, they don't realize but that we are not of this world. Our kingdom is in heaven places. In heavenly realm. Where Christ Jesus is the king. And he has made us to become kings and the priests. He is the king of the kings and you are king. Jesus is the king of kings over other kings. Those kings are you and me. We are kings in the kingdom of God. You remember when Peter said in 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10 but you you are you are just read with me you are oh chosen generation you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood we are kings we are priests a holy nation God the special possession for which reason we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light there is no darkness remember we came from darkness and we have been transferred in the light of God this is another kingdom we should go like son of light no hidden agenda no hidden things but let us be light because we are the son and daughters of the kingdom the sons of light praise the lord we are chosen a generation a real priesthood the holy nation his own special people we may proclaim the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light oh once we were not a people but now we are people of god we had not obtained mercy but now we have obtained mercy let us come back on revelation 5 10. he had made us kings and priests to our to our to our god god is above where he is is where we are we are kings to our god we are priests to our god but our dominion is where we shall reign where on earth simple question are you king or are you slave really your position is a highest position in the kingdom of God. May the Lord teach you to understand who you are. Teach you to understand your position in the Lord. May the Lord help you to know more about your position. It's not just a title, but it is a position. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stand and pray. Thank you, Lord. You have made us kings and priests to you, and we shall reign on this earth. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy.
worship you alone.